I've uncovered the top five hidden causes of chronic pain that your doctor probably won't tell you about. And in this video, I'll show you exactly what I found. Did you know that chronic pain affects up to one in five people in the US, Western Europe, and Australia? That means it's currently at epidemic levels. Now, we often hear about the common culprits, these being poor posture, too much sitting, and endless hours in front of screens. But the truth is there's so much more to this story. In fact, it's more often caused by the food that you eat and the environment that you live in. So let's dive into what's really causing your pain. First up is gonna be seed oils. Yes, those seemingly innocent oils lurking in your kitchen cabinet might actually be the culprit. If you're consuming any foods which contain these ingredients, these oils, then you need to listen up because this applies to you. Industrial seed oil consumption was near zero at the turn of the 20th century, but it skyrocketed around the year of 1950. This was partly due to cheap crops, corrupt scientists colluding with industry giants, and an extensive marketing campaign. In the US, the daily percentage of calories coming from soybean oil alone increased by 123 thousand percent. Now it's worth noting that these fats were originally used as industrial lubricants for machinery. They were never considered food. And why is this bad? Well, because the fats that you eat become incorporated into your cells. More specifically, you use them as building blocks to build membranes. And it turns out the type of fats determine how well the cell membranes function. These are considered pro-inflammatory, meaning they can predisposed towards inflammation, and they're also highly susceptible to oxidation, in other words, damage. When you eat these oils in the diet, they displace the other more useful fats that are stored in your membranes. Now, one useful fat belongs to a family called omega-3. It's called DHA. Now, if you look at the effect of DHA on inflammation, it has the exact opposite effect. It's considered a potent anti-inflammatory. Research has shown a very strong link between high omega-6 levels and chronic pain of multiple kinds. This includes back pain, muscle pain, chronic regional pain syndrome, jaw pain, headaches, abdominal pain, and pelvic pain. So to combat this, you really need to ditch the seed oils, immediately replace them with healthy animal fats from grass-fed or pasture-fed mm. sources. Number two is a very common one, and one that you might be overlooking. This is hidden vitamin deficiencies. One of those is vitamin D. Whether it's because of an irrational fear of the sun and not getting enough natural sunlight, or excessive use of sunscreen, low levels of vitamin D have been linked with headaches, abdominal pain, knee pain, back pain, persistent musculoskeletal pain, bone pain, costochondritis, and fibromyalgia. But if you are actually someone who has a genuine deficit in vitamin D, that being a blood level below 25 nanograms per deciliter, then you really want to get it up because the research does suggest by boosting it right up to between 70 and 100 nanograms per deciliter, it might actually help to alleviate chronic pain. So you'd either do this via abundant natural sunlight if you have access to it. If you don't have access to it, then you're going to want to take a vitamin D supplement. However, it's not just vitamin D. Deficiencies in the B group family, so vitamin B1, B6, and B12, can also cause a form of pain. This is usually gonna be neuropathic. So a peripheral neuropathy, which might be something like tingling, numbness, burning in the hands and feet, aching, or even like mild vibratory sensations. And you might be thinking that this doesn't apply to you because you eat very healthily. But I wanna make it clear that living in the modern world itself literally depletes the body of nutrition because toxins and other factors that the human body is exposed to, these things increase the demand for those micronutrients, including the B vitamins. And this concept is especially applicable in someone who has a chronic disease of any kind. If you do have these symptoms, make sure to get those B vitamins checked. B12 and B6 are fairly easy to test for. However, B1 is a little bit more tricky. Now I have an entire playlist dedicated to this one vitamin, but I have a video specifically looking at this topic of how best to test for this. Just as a side note, I'm always looking to learn and I find the best way to do that is listening to people's real life experience. So on this topic, if there is something that you found helped you individually, so whether it was a diet, a supplement, 
any kind of an, another therapy, whatever you did helped you with your chronic pain, please let me know in the comments below. I would be super interested to hear. But next up, another hidden cause of chronic pain are going to be those plant toxins and autoimmune reactions against foods. The main point here is that if you notice a worsening in symptoms after eating certain foods or food groups, then it's very possible that this could apply to you. So if your gut barrier is compromised, proteins in your diet can provoke your immune system to attack your own tissues. And this can cause pain in the joints, in the muscles, and in the spine, or basically anywhere else. You may have heard of this as leaky gut, and the common dietary components that might trigger this kind of a reaction are gonna be gluten, casein, egg protein, and nuts. But you also have lots of other foods that can do this as well. And really the best way to test for this is going to be a food mediated immunoglobulin test. In short, this is called an IgG panel and companies such as Cyrex Labs, among many other companies do this. And what they do is they measure your immune cells, the immune cells that you develop against the foods that you're eating. And you find that when you have a high immune reaction, this can actually trigger an autoimmune response. And so what some people do or what they find is that when they remove those foods, the foods that they are reacting to immunologically, they find that their autoimmunity and their pain improve. However, there are some other plant compounds which simply will not show up on a test like this, and one of those is oxalate. Oxalates are plant defense chemicals shaped like shards of glass, and they're found in abundance in certain plants. Now, they can accumulate in bones, in muscles, in connective tissues, and there they cause mechanical irritation and inflammation. Once again, I have an entire playlist on this topic, so make sure to check that out if you're interested. Next up is another plant defense chemical, and these are called lectins. Once again, they are also found in certain vegetables, grains, legumes, and they can irritate the gut and trigger an inflammatory response. Now, it's way beyond the scope of this video, and for that, I refer you to the work of Dr. Stephen Gundry, who I've linked in the description. Fourth on this list is insulin resistance shockingly common, affecting at least four out of 10 people in the United States. This is a precursor to diabetes, and it can cause nerve damage and make your nerves hypersensitive to pain. Unfortunately, it's greatly underdiagnosed because doctors are taught to look for the end stage condition being diabetes. They don't look at the early signs and symptoms, which people have sometimes for many years leading up to their eventual diagnosis. So you could be insulin resistant without knowing about it. And if you don't know exactly what to look out for, then you're not necessarily even gonna get told by your doctor. Now it's well known that consistently elevated blood sugar levels damage the peripheral nerves. You might not know that insulin resistance also impairs blood flow to the brain, specifically regions which are involved in pain perception. And what this ultimately does is it makes you more sensitive to potentially painful stimuli. In other words, you might feel pain when you shouldn't be feeling it, but because you're insulin resistant, your nerves are too sensitive. And so because of this, addressing underlying insulin resistance can make a massive difference and really should be one of your top priorities anyway for about a thousand other reasons in terms of maintaining long-term health. And last but not least, these are probably the least common, but most insidious. This is going to be stealth infections, mold, and chronic inflammatory response syndrome. If you've been diagnosed with some kind of pain disorder, but it's idiopathic, meaning they don't really know the cause, you've tried uh, diets, you've tried supplements, and they don't really touch it, then it's very possible that you could be dealing with a stealth infection and you need to investigate that. So you want to go to like a Lyme literate physician if you're in the US. Someone know knows how to test for this, investigate it properly. You also want to consider mold if you live in a moldy building if you've had water damage in your current residence or your past residence then you probably want to investigate that as well that's beyond the scope of this video however i have done interviews with dr sandy gupta and he talks exactly how to assess that and how to um, identify that but basically if everything that you've tried doesn't work then it's very likely that you could be dealing with one of these stealth pathogens or you could be suffering from like a mold related illness and if that's the case chances are anything that you do otherwise is also not going to help that so if that's the case you really want to find a specialist who knows how to deal with these things and get a consultation speak to them about it so i hope you found this helpful and i'll see you next time